Hey, hey, welcome to the Sounds on Vinyl show. My name is Phil Boyer, and as always, from across the vast open sea, my brother from another mother, professor, rock star extraordinaire, Mr. Mike Svensson. Mike, how in the hell is it going over there in Scandinavia? Oh, it's going good. You know, we got everything here. Sheep pills, thrills, <laughs> Vikings, and you know. Drinking out you know, of the horns. That, drinking the, out of the horns. The, the usual. All the, all the good stuff that you don't have in, in your neck of the woods. But Well, that's true. That's true. Yes. I still live yeah. like that, though. I still I, I have my <laughs> own little corner of Sweden right in here. And I yes. drink, drink whiskey and, you know, yeah. I, I pretend. Out of the horns. I pretend. <laughs> you pretend. Out of the horns. That's right. Yeah. Definitely. All right. <laughs> but, hey, we're not alone today. No, we're not. No. Who, who's with us? Who's with? Oh, it's a great band called Velvet Insane, out of Sweden, of course. Yeah, hey guys, yeah. how are you doing? What's going on? Good, really yeah. good. Yeah, really good. from the northern part, actually, of Sweden. From the northern part. Northern. Of wow. Okay. The, the so, part, actually. <laughs> oh, cool. So we're joined by Jesper, who's the guitar player, and yeah. Jonas, who is on vocals in this great band. So let's dive right into this. What's the story behind Velvet Insane and how did you all get together? Yeah, we started uh, back in uh, 2013. Yeah. Um, yeah, I met Jonas at a local club. He was having a show and I was having a rehearsal space in, in the... Yeah, in, in the same uh, venue yeah. or like the same. Yeah. Um, so we met and... Uh, we talked a bit about uh, rock and roll and uh, that what I got you? some uh, like demos and um, some songs. And then we uh, met up in uh, in a rehearsal space yeah. and we jammed. Jonas was the drummer uh, at that point. Uh, in okay. The so, yeah. And then two weeks after that, he became the lead singer. Yeah. Yeah. Because All right. we found out that... Uh, I found out that uh, he was a great um, showman and uh, frontman and uh, yeah, everything. Cool. Doing a Phil Collins or a Dave Grohl right there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, so, so uh, what did you grow up listen to and, and, and so forth? Did, did, you, did you have any, any particular thing that, that you wanted to go with when, when you had those songs ready? Did you know the the, the direction the, the that you wanted to go? What was that the the seed for for Velvet Insane, or did that come much later? Yeah, no, I, I think I had kind of a plan for. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have a seventies glam rock band, but I didn't know yeah. how to uh, to do it. And I've always right. loved bands like the T Rex, Monty Hoople, Slade. Um. And uh, I came up with this name, Velvet Insane. It sounds really like it could be the name of a band from London in 1973 or something like that. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it sounds pretty rough, but also gentle. Yeah. Velvet Insane. Yeah. We thought that was a good name. It is a good name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so talking about music, what, what did you guys grow up listening to? And, and did you buy a lot of records or, or how did that come about with the music that you listen to? Yeah, for, for me, um, I listened to some punk rock, actually, like The Offsprings and maybe Bad Religion and Metallica. Well, that was metal, of course, but. Um, I listen to a lot of music and uh, uh, maybe we'll listen to some Boogie Woogie at home as well. Uh, like my mother, she uh, she loves the Swedish, you know, the dance band Michael there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I grew up with that and uh, maybe that have brought something into Velvet actually. I like the, the Boogie Woogie style that you can hear in a couple of uh, those bands. But it was a lot of different music at my place. Yeah, kind mm. of the same, but without the dance band. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and my first 
real love that I had uh, in a band was uh, Kiss when I was 10 years old. I found the double platinum album on a All right. old cassette um, kind of. And uh, All right, I really cool. love um, the 1978 version of uh, Strutter. Oh, yeah. It's a Strutter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, the version with the that had a little more disco to it. Um, yeah yeah and i really love that and i wanted to be a rock star when i first heard it <laughs> and uh, then i found out like uh, the new york dolls rod stewart and all those uh, great 70s uh, rock bands so cool and and talking about music w- w- your musical backgrounds did you do you start out just for playing the guitar from the get-go or you like jonas do you play around with different things or did you start like playing guitar or... no 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 when when jasper started out i mean you told us that you were used to be a drummer and now you're a singer <laughs> was it similar for you did you start out with the guitar or did you started with something different no it was uh, guitar from the, from the start really from the get go okay yeah. all right cool yeah so so you've been touring a lot uh i read online somewhere that you've been touring both europe and japan and and <laughs> the us and australia yeah tell us about tell us about those tours and what kind of experience as a band <laughs> yeah, you got we made... to take with you yeah, the, the first tour we made was in Australia, mm-hmm. uh, and that was quite a, an experience. It was back in 2015. Uh, well, we was pretty young dudes, and uh, we we rented a car and drove on the wrong side, uh, so to say. <laughs> uh, so that was an experience uh, itself, uh, and uh, we had some. I think we had some great shows there. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and um, I think we made like four or five shows yeah. in Australia. Uh, so, well, it, that was a very good experience, yeah. I must say. And, and then we went to Japan, I think the same year, actually. Yeah, No, no maybe so. the two, in 2016, we made an acoustic uh, tour in Japan. Yeah, and that okay. was cool. just amazing. Uh, it was, we just did two shows i think yeah three shows something like that and the feedback feedback were really incredible from the audience and yeah it was uh, a real adventure and fun to see both Osaka and tokyo cool and then you did a tour of of the u.s also yeah was that in is it the same year? Uh, the most no. This was twenty. Yeah, this was twenty sixteen actually, yeah. and Japan was two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, exactly. We made uh, U USA and uh, I, I, I. How many shows did we? I don't made? remember really, no. but but it was great. And then we have toured a lot in the U Europe. Um, yeah, in Scandinavia. In Scandinavia and also, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Everywhere, really. So what what kind of experience as a band did you take with you from all those tours? Yeah, a lot. I think we all grow, grow up. Uh, yeah. We became men on, on those tours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Both like musically, of course, playing together live outside sweden that's a it's a big step for a young band yeah yeah and uh, and uh, to evolve uh, like a person as well yeah you, you get a yeah great connection with each other when you are traveling outside and got to handle all the problems uh, within the, yeah with all the logistics and such things so and then living together yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. So, so did did that that whole experience change the the way you look at your music? Did that change anything, or did you just think that we're on the right track? So let's let's grow from that. Or did that change anything in the music? 
I think it's changed uh, because the, it's a big change from our first album, um, mm-hmm. our debut album that came out in 2019. Yeah. yeah. But we mm-hmm. recorded it in 2016, I yeah. think. Uh, and it's a lot more hard rock and uh, punk rock, really. Yeah, exactly. A little bit mm-hmm. metal, it's just heavier. And mm-hmm. then our second album, Rock and Roll Glitter Suit, that came out last summer. And we really mm-hmm. found what we wanted to do. Uh, yeah, with the whole glam rock yeah. thing. We found yeah, okay. Album, really, with that album. And yeah. Cool. So you, you, talking about the song Backstreet Liberace, we, we're going to listen to it in a short while, but it it featured Dragon and, and Nick Anderson from the Helicopters. How did that collaboration come about? Um, we had not known Dragon for a while uh, because me and him are work. We are doing a beer together called Riff. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. Um, yeah. I heard of it. It's re- really it's four beers. It's a small family <laughs> with uh, a lot yeah. of different beers, and uh, from that we got to know him and we became good friends. All of our, all of us, mm. and we have toured together with him and played with him a few shows and uh, stuff like that. And then he, we just asked him and showed him this song and asked him if he liked it and if he wanted to sing on it. So. Cool. Yeah. And he All right. And it was a blast and then we got together with uh, and asked Nikki about it and uh, he felt the same. So, yeah. Cool. So th- both of them are playing guitars. I mean I can hear Dragon he's is singing yeah. on the song but Nikki was on it and Nikki yeah. is playing the guitar solo together with me. All right, that's cool. Hey, and let's listen to this song. This is Velvet Insane with Backstreet Liberace. All right, Backstreet Liberace by Velvet Insane. We got a couple of guys from the band with us chatting, having a good time, drinking from the horns. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, just mugs. Yeah, we just got mugs right now. So uh, t- talking about a little bit more ab- about uh, this song and, and, and the album that you released in, in 2021, uh, it's been a, a crazy year, a, a crazy couple of years f- for uh, most of us, of course, w- yeah. with doing the, the pandemic and so forth. How did that f- uh, form you guys w- with the music and, and releasing an album? Because you released it in 2021 when... Uh, it it wasn't really over. So how did that affect you with, with the release of the album? I think we and we really got the time to to make the album, uh, and we worked really hard to find what we wanted to do. Really, and yeah. Create that, and uh, when we released the album, we toured and played a lot in around Sweden and played small unplugged shows. Yeah, outside music stores, Yeah, for example. And, uh, and played cool. small festivals and uh, yeah, we played a yeah, lot actually. Yeah, we, we thought that um, the, the, the virus, the corona, the pandemic, it, um, it, it shouldn't like stop us from uh, play or touring. So. Uh, we come up with the idea, or you, Jesper, come up with the idea to tour these like music stores and to get the record out anyway. So, mm-hmm. yeah, well, I thought it went good. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, yeah, we played some electric shows as well, um, some small uh, places mm. and uh, stuff like that. And this spring, we have done our first real tour on the album together with Crash Diet. We played Scandinavia and the UK together with them. And uh, Okay, cool. How was that? It was great. It was fun. Yeah. Really fun. It was really fun. Like these songs uh, (laughs) that you really like to uh, come out and and play these for the, the audience. It has been fantastic. 
Uh, and you know, in the UK, uh, I hope they liked it because it's our, our sound. It's it's from uh, it's influenced by the uh, by the British rock bands from the 70s. So uh, I hope they liked it back back there. <laughs> yeah, it sounded uh, that uh, that they liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So you got a good response from from fans and so forth. Yeah, really good. Mm. Cool. All right. And now talking about the because uh, I listened to to uh, the album that you released in 2019, and I listened to to this one, and uh, there is a bit of a progression that you that you talked about with the punk style and more rock and roll. Is that the new sound on, on the new album? Is that the way that you're are continuing doing songs in in the future? Yeah, yeah, I you, think so. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, it's especially for the next album, <laughs> I think. yeah. Or we, we, yeah. I think we have found the sound now. But you, you, you never know. <laughs> really, we, no. we probably evolve in the yeah. future. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, but but you're not thinking about going back to doing more more of the the traditional rock and roll that you did on that album you you're it's more in the glam and new york dolls and and sweet yeah, and slate so. and so forth yeah i think yeah, okay. you're more unique in that way yeah uh, also and it fits yeah. better and uh, yeah that's what we want to do really I and mean, we are working a bit on our next album right now really we are mm. bright cool. and uh, um have been into the recording studio and worked out some tracks and yeah stuff. nice could you tell us something could you give us a scoop or how, how many songs are there are you collaboration with with more with dragon or nick or somebody else i don't think we can really <laughs> oh come on <laughs> come on man okay give us an exclusive Okay, you can you can know that there is like ten to twelve songs. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are okay. with, Eric. we are working with the producer Thomas Cooksberg. Yeah. This, oh, oh man. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of glam rock. Yeah, he's a mm. specialist at uh, <laughs> at that. Yeah. I I know him from a completely different type of music, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it, most people do. In my, yeah, in my record collection, it's only entombed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so the next but it. album will be the dark yeah. of all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be very interested to hearing him do doing your your music. That that would be really yeah. cool to hear. Yeah, keep yeah. an eye out. He's a big fan of glam <laughs> rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He really loves uh, Bowie and all Monty Hoople and all this stuff. So yeah, yeah. Now, now, Jasper, you you got a lot of stuff going on on the side. You got the Car Jam project, and and there is some new stuff that that's going on. How do you keep up? What's your priority? I mean, Velvet are you fitting it? It's all fitting everything together. Oh, okay, it's, Velvet is always number one. Um, yeah, and. I think Velvet is included in really everything that I do. Yeah, and cool. Jonas is always have some kind of finger <laughs> in, in everything, game. like yeah. the, the <laughs> and and yeah. Save the Noise project and uh, the Car Jam. All the, yeah. So it's always a bit of Velvet Insane in everything. Could could you talk a little about about the Save the Noise project? Because I uh, I only read about it on social media. What is that? Yeah, because there's there's a lot of people involved in that yeah, project. It's a charity project. Um, oh, okay. For people who um, has had uh, for musicians really that have had a hard time during the pandemic, and mm -hmm. so we have done two songs. Uh, Called Save the Noise, both songs. Um, All right. And we, people like D. Snyder, Michael Starr, Jesper Binzer from DAD, and a lot of uh, great singers and uh, musicians are uh, doing that together with uh, me and Jonas. Jonas is also singing on the first song. So. Oh, yeah. man, that's cool. Uh, and now we are working on the third song, really. Uh, and that's for. Uh, 
in charity for uh, the the stuff that's happening in Ukraine right now. Okay. And I'm cool. working. Very cool. I'm doing that together with Filippa from Fandemother, who's a good friend yeah. of yours, and Rasmus Harnesk, who's kind of an entrepreneur in the music business. So we are putting that cool. project together. Okay. So you're only releasing singles? Yeah. For for different charities? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's we cool. We talked about doing some uh, kind of like a vinyl or something like that. We really love vinyls. So. Some limited nice. stuff, like we do on the Coriam uh, thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and we have to. I'm I'm sorry, Jonas, and sorry, Phil, because we have to do this. You know, Phil, what's going on here? Oh, we have yeah. to talk about Kiss, yeah. of course. <laughs> of so, course. Because I, mean, I, 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 actually, I actually met Martin uh, 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 and Anders from, from Bonafide, and, and with Martin and I talked about the Car Jam project. Yeah. And so, as a Kiss fan, how was that to, <laughs> to be able to do that project? It was kind of a dream, really. Uh, yeah, doing kiss songs with people that I really look up to. Yeah, um, it's a weird kind of thing to do, really, um, because kiss was my first love in music, and I'm I'm doing playing like Snowblind from Ace Freely solo album together with Dre again. That I was. Uh, <laughs> He was kind of my idol when I was little as well. So it's really, uh, so yeah, it's it's weird, really. Yeah, yeah. And and we, me and Gustav Krumfeld, is uh, uh, Martin Eklund's uh, son, and mm -hmm. uh, he's a great video producer and a great musician as well. Uh, a really good bass player. Um. We put that uh, project together, uh, together with Dre again and Loretta Caravello, who's Eric Carr's sister, and uh, mm -hmm. and to get and also Bruce Kulick. So it's it, all right. It, yeah, everything was really yeah. weird. Yeah, but fun. And there, 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 and there was Martin told me there was something completely insane that you got to witness. You got some tracks from Eric Carr himself. Yeah, some from from Loretta. Yeah, some demos that he was doing at his uh, parents' home, I think, in his old mm -hmm. bedroom. He was recording that on a small, uh, like I don't know what to call it really, but some recording uh, um, stuff. And uh, yeah, it was it was really weird when he's when she sent it to us. We couldn't believe our ears, really. <laughs> yeah, so we we added that to our when we were playing, um. So mm -hmm. we have recorded a song together with Eric Carr. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah, crazy. It's when when he when he told me that, I I couldn't believe it. I I mean, uh, uh to I, I mean, Martin said to be able to to hear Eric's voice through the speakers. I mean, it, and and for us to to put music on that, it's man, that must be something else. Yeah, that's crazy stuff yeah, right there. Really crazy, and yeah, the the project is a, it's a tribute project to Eric Carr and Kiss. So we get the chance to be um, really nerdy. Where we did, yeah, all kinds of uh, <laughs> nerd stuff, really. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was a uh, it was great, and we are kind of working on a second uh, album. Oh man! But we, we don't cool. know when it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out when the time is right. But we are working really slowly on that one. But yeah, hopefully some that's... new songs are coming out. Oh man, that's just awesome. And speaking of songs, I think we should go in and listen to some more of uh, uh, Velvet Insane here. Here is a song called Space Age DJ. Here we go. All right. Space Age DJ, Velvet Insane. They're with us chatting, talking about music and all the fun stuff that goes on. <laughs> 
Yeah. Cool. So, so what's going on in the future? What what the future hold for you? Is it more touring or or are you just focusing on the new album? What's going on? Yeah, we have some shows coming up this yeah. summer and uh, to the fall. And uh, so the the most uh, uh, near nearest uh, like show is in Motala. Yeah. All oh, right. At the festival there. So if you have any chance to go from, was it Idaho you said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hop on a plane. Hop on a plane. Yeah. Hop on a plane. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that and we have some. Is there any more? Well, we are working. Working like, on the uh, on the new album. Yeah, working. On the... So we're doing. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna record the, the most of the material this summer. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll see. Yeah, when then we we'll see when out. it's gonna come out and. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of shows, both in Sweden, but we are working on some uh, tours uh, in Europe as well yeah. in the fall. So we're going to play right. a lot live and, uh, yeah, working on some new stuff. And we are also working with a new Car Yam album <laughs> and, <laughs> and some other stuff. So, yeah. All really right. Busy. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time. And don't yeah. forget to check out Velvet Insane on Facebook, Instagram, and all the streaming services. And buy their album. Support the band. Yes. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sounds on Vinyl podcast. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you very much. This all right. You. Take you. it all easy. Right. All right. Okay. And until, until next, next week. time. Yeah. Later. Later. <laughs>